my slideshow my slideshow isn't nearly as fancy as everyone else's um oh and andre or socorro could one of you take notes in the notes document i can fill in my stuff later as well so uh, okay so um i'm here to talk about bulk uploader advances uh, I'm going to sort of talk about the current status, some of the challenges we face, uh, the goals, and then options that we have going forward. Um, so current status, I mean, people are putting data into Neotoma. We got 146 data sets uh, added in the last month. Uh, those of you who were here on Monday saw the, the progress that a lot of the different constituent databases are making. Uh, <laughs> Back of the back of the envelope calculation. Hey, if in the next 100 years we're expecting 175,000 new data sets uh, coming in through Tilia, so that's is not bad. Uh, this is a, a quick graph that I made just to show that. Um, and here's here's an example of the API. So this is these data set uh, stats you can pull really quickly. Anyway, um, current status is basically uh, like single files uploading through Tilia. So there are tools like the Lipid to Neotoma converter. Um, there, there have been sort of ways that we've tried to assist in getting files into Tilia or getting data sets transformed into Tilia, but really uploading single files through Tilia is the, is the way that things are happening. Uh, in the past, Eric uh, really managed these bulk uploads uh, himself, doing manual exports of large sets of data. Um, I've had to take that over, but it's slow. I obviously don't know as much as Eric did. Um, and there's and because of that, there's a few outstanding projects uh, where we have data in hand and just it's slow getting things up. So there's Pavela. Um, there's the pollen monitoring program for Europe and the Great Lakes Research Center. So sort of a, a good representation of multiple data sets, pollen uh, led to 10 and uh, otter data sets. Pavela is Mexican mammals and there's a giant uh, Mexican, uh, extinct Mexican otter. So that's why there's that. As uh, so why is it difficult and taking a while? Uh, so, I mean, we we always face these data vocabulary issues. Uh, individual databases or large data sets uh, have their own vocabularies. Uh, and Neotoma, I think one of the strengths of Neotoma is that we have a relatively strong uh, controlled vocabulary, oftentimes with hierarchies within it. So uh, Andre was talking about depositional environments. We have quite an extensive vocabulary of depositional environments. And so when we when we try to bring things in from external sources, we have to do a lot of that alignment. And then there are questions about whether we um, whether we reassign things, whether we're adding new controlled vocabularies. And I think we were in a position with Eric where that decision really could be left up to Eric. Um, and now I would really like us to move towards a more communal um, way of managing these vocabularies and making those decisions. Uh, there are data validation issues. So uh, it's pretty easy from a computational workflow to get direct matches to strings, approximate matching. So for things like uh, names and stuff like that is a little more complex. It is um, it's easier to do when you have a graphical user interface like with Tilia, where you can sort of get a list of selected names and, and click on the one that you want. In a scripted workflow like using R or Python, that becomes a little more challenging. It, it, it's not as user friendly. It breaks up the workflow. And so that's been a learning process. The data dependencies can be complex. So uh, because Neotoma is so highly normalized uh, and other people's data sets are often not, uh, you know, we, we range from just having something on a spreadsheet to having 
full databases that we're trying to import. And in Neotoma, there are these relationships that may not be present in other data sets. And so trying to figure out how to do that transformation is not always as straightforward as we'd like. Um, and then there are technical issues between formats and programming languages. So we get, you know, a raw CSV file. We then have to transform it into something that a programming language can understand, uh, like R or Python. It's then got to get piped through the Neotoma API and then into the database. And so there's a lot of layers in this process. Um, and it's just, you know, as we've as I've been getting more experience with this, I think we're solving a lot of the problems. And uh, so that's why I want to talk about the goals and, and a little bit about the status of where we are. So the goal is really that the users bring raw files in whatever format they're in, whether it be SQL databases or uh, a bunch of spreadsheets, Excel files, whatever it, XML, whatever it is. Uh, we then transform the raw files to some sort of template option. Um, so something that's a bit more standardized and that can be done programmatically. Uh, and then the templates are validated through some pre-existing script. Those, temp those validated templates are then uploaded to a holding tank and then the individual sites can be vetted using Tilia. So in this process, uh, the main point is that we are still using Tilia because it it has all these extra validation steps um, and is a bit more user friendly to do the final upload. But we get all of the bulk of files in relatively quickly and do some pre-validation. Uh, so there is uh, so I have been working recently with the Lead to Ten uh, group. Um, there's some Python code and basically what happens is we are transforming things into a, uh, a CSV file, comma separated value file with different columns. There are sort of different rules for the different columns. Um, there is one script that is the validator and one script that is the uploader. And what the validator does is it posts a log file for each record for each CSV file that has a list of the things that need to be fixed and the things that are okay. Uh, and then at the end of that validation, it tags on a long string that represents basically, it's it's the state of the file the, the last time it was validated. Uh, and then that way, when we go to upload, we can check that there's that validation string in the document. And if it's there, it means it's passed all the tests and we can then push it up piece by piece into Neotoma. Um, one of the big challenges that we've had with, uh, <laughs> sorry, looking at the closed captioning, Neotoma is written as Neatoma, which I think is great. Okay, uh, anyway, uh, one of the challenges we have had with Tilia, those of you who have run into errors lately will know, um, is that, uh, sorry, with Tilia lately, uh, Tilia, when it uploads things, actually like commits piece by piece and so if you have an error part way through your upload uh i have to then go in and delete a data set or a site or whatever it is um what this new uploader is going to do is it's going to do it all together in one piece so that if we do have partial failures we're not going to have artifacts of that um and I think that's a really big addition to uh, the, the workflow. Um, and then the last piece is still using Tilia in there. I think one of the points here is that Tilia is a really important piece uh, of the Neotoma infrastructure. We want to keep using it, uh, but we also want to build multiple pathways up into Neotoma. And so that's that's where we're trying to get. So the options we have for doing this are, you know, we can keep doing this as bespoke methods, um, pushing things up piece by piece and, and coming up with, with new formats. I think my preferred uh, option is to look at some sort of new package with documentation to really lay out like this is how people should do these kinds of things. 
And then ultimately, uh, we want to take the lessons that we're learning in the Python package and then port them over as part of the Neotoma 2 R package so that people can build their sites and things, whether it's a one-off or whether it's a bunch of data sets um, in the R package, do that internal validation in R and then actually use the R package they would log in with a steward identifier and then push up to the holding tank using the same set of API endpoints and functions as we would use in the Python package. Um, but I'm open to suggestions. Uh, that's sort of where, where I'm at. All right, thank you very much. And I'll stop the recording.